How did this help me in the real world? Guess where this question asked the most? In a math class. I can affirm you from my personal experience that each time we're going to start a new topic, this question was asked. I'm interested to know how many of you have actually heard this question. By a raise of hands, tell me. As you can see, it's a large part of the audience, around 80%, probably a bit more. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you have actually asked this question during your university lessons or your school lessons? Let me put you out of this ignorance. The math is a bunch of useless numbers that only works in magical devices which we call computers or the rigid and beautiful structures which we call buildings. Now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine that you're going on a trip with your family, with your friends, with your girlfriend, whomever you enjoy going on holidays with. Of course, you want the weather to be perfect. And for some reason, you unlock your cell phone and you check up for the weather forecast. It looks swell, a perfectly sunny day of 30 degrees Celsius. You're anxious to get there to the place you want and sit down, enjoy the holiday, enjoy the weather, have a drink, and just smile. But when you arrive to the summer paradise you've pictured, you see billions of water droplets falling from the sky. Of course, you're sad, irritated, disappointed, with the weather, but also with the weather forecast, which in some way lied to you. I didn't tell you to imagine this scenario to make you desire a holiday. I told you this scenario for another reason, because honestly, I also desire a holiday, but it's not the time. I told you to imagine this scenario to explain to you how math plays a vital role. Does anybody know what differential equation is? A differential equation relates an equation. A differential equation is our equations that relate to derivatives with their functions. Well, what does this mean? Let's, let me put it in simpler terms. When we put it with the weather forecast, what it says is that the physical quantities are the functions. So the physical quantities can be the air temperature, the air moisture, the humidity, and all the other factors that affect the climate. Meanwhile, the derivatives are the rate of change of these um, physical quantities. By, putting, by taking the, uh, the differential equations and doing some nasty calculations, which I don't intend to show you because honestly, I get scared when I see them, you can calculate or predict the weather um, for six days in advance. Amazing, isn't it? The scope that math gives us is unimaginable. I've been talking about the physical world and how math affects the physical world. Keep that in mind. Math is so common, it's in our showers. Well, not actually in our showers, but it can help us determine how much water we use. Keep this in mind. An average Colombian person uses 130 liters per day and has a shower between five and eight minutes. That's a lot of water. And in a society where water is becoming a scarce resource, it's important that we take in consideration the amount of water we use. By putting this data point about how much water you use in a day and how much time you shower, you can find an equation that when you, you find the derivative, you can calculate the relative rate of change of the water. What does this mean? The fluid, how much water comes out when you have a shower of eight minutes. Why are we doing this? We don't do it just to, just to do, do some fun equations and some math. Most people don't like it, really. We do it to solve a problem. We do this to see how much water we use. Don't worry. I know people like the showers, and they like having showers with a nice pressure, because honestly, it's good and relaxing, and you enjoy your showers. And you think that by having, uh, by using the le least amount of water possible, you'll have pressure that won't satisfy you. But it's not true. We can calculate and create shower heads with the pressure you want by using math. Just with the Bernoulli principle, that's a principle that relates the speed of a fluid and the pressure of the fluid, a bit of math and the pressure formula, 
you can do this. You can you can create shower heads with the pressure you want and with the least amount of water consumption possible. Amazing, isn't it? I've been talking about how math affects the physical world. Let's get out of this scope and let's see how math affects the how math affects the personal life. Math is so broad and so beautiful that we don't have to link it to the physical world. Do you all know what the coefficient of correlation is? The coefficient of correlation is a value between 0 and 1 that measures the interdependence of two variables. Now, let's imagine that one variable, the x-axis data column variable, is the amount of times you, times you fail. What is failure? Well, for me, failure can be actually not passing my math exams or probably not getting the girl at the party or losing a football match because that's that hurts my heart. And in the y-axis data column, you put the amount of times you, you succeed. Once again, success is very broad. And normally, success is the opposite as failure. So for me, it would be actually passing my math exam, getting the girl, or winning the match. By calculating the coefficient of correlation between these two variables, you can measure how many times you're going to have to fail in order to succeed. Isn't this something we're told constantly by our parents, by our teachers, by our friends, by society, that we have to fail in order to succeed? Funny enough, we can see how math can explain the common sayings. How math is a representation of what we say. Think about it. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. We're putting a numerical value to the amount of letters. We can say that there's five letters, five words in a sentence. Think of what I'm saying. It makes sense, doesn't it? Math is not a subject. In some really, really weird way, math is a lifestyle. If you don't, try to get this thought about around your head. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to give you another example. Life is a complex mixture of algorithms. What's an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of instructions. It can be, an it can be the recipe we use to cook brownies, but you miserably fail because that's not your thing. Or the financial algorithms, you, or the algorithms that are used in the financial industry, to measure the, to calculate the fluctuations of the stock, stock market. You, the person that's sitting right in front of me, followed an algorithm to come to that exact same spot. You first thought of coming to the TEDx, then you decided to buy the ticket of the TEDx, then you actually woke up today and said. I'm going to go to the TEDx, and so on, until you sat on that same spot. I'm sorry if I've messed with your brains. It's not been my intention. But we're going to get a bit crazier now. Do you all know what chaos theory is? Chaos theory is the field uh, of the study of mathematics that observes uh, the behavior and conditions of dynamic systems that are highly sensitive to initial conditions. What is this? Let's relate it to the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect says that if a butterfly in Colombia flaps its wings, it could possibly generate a tornado in China. Amazing. Now, mathematically, the, this, this is portrayed by functions that are positioned within a plane, and they move within this exact same plane. Imagine a graph, a 2D graph, and a function moving within this graph. Isn't this life? Think about how every moment in life has affected you and has created the person you are today. That if you were a child and you were stu deciding to play tennis or football, and you decided to play football, affected your life and changed it, that changed it drastically? That if you had a shower instead of having breakfast this exact morning, affected if there was going to be traffic or not? All of this is what math is. All of this is life. And for each moment in life, math plays its part, whether, sh whether you notice it or you don't. Hopefully, after this tedious talk for some, you'll be able to notice how math actually plays a part in your life. Thank you. <laughs>